At that time, when the James Webb Space Telescope launched, we expected it to refine our knowledge of the universe rather than unravel it. But in the shadowy depths, something has been found in deep space, something so unexpected, so fundamentally bizarre that it seems to ridicule the very principles of physics. Hidden among the earliest structures after the Big Bang, a new class of object has surfaced too small to be galaxies, too massive to be stars, and too red to be anything we've ever seen before. These mysterious entities were invisible to every telescope until Webb arrived. And now, with its unprecedented infrared vision, the impossible is finally visible. Scientists are calling them little red dots. However, what they genuinely are, nobody knows. Some believe they are the missing link between the earliest galaxies and supermassive black holes. Others have an inkling of something even stranger, cosmic relics from an age governed by rules we no longer understand. Today, we dive deep into one of James Webb's most perplexing discoveries. Moreover, what you are about to hear might change how you see the universe forever. It all began not today, but decades ago when astronomers first encountered a mystery they couldn't explain. In the 1950s, with radio astronomy in its infancy, a strange object, 3C-73, was detected. It looked like a star but radiated energy over a wide range that no star should. Its chemical characteristics didn't match any known element and its emissions blinked and flared with no logical pattern. This object and others like it were called quasi-stellar objects or quasars close to stars but not quite. They were fast, bright, and extraordinarily compact, smaller than our solar system, yet visible from countless light years away. Eventually, these mysteries were solved by means of the revolutionary concept of supermassive black holes surrounded by violent accretion disks. It took over 20 years for scientists to unravel that enigma and now we're back in the same place. The James Webb Telescope has revealed hundreds of new anomalies, things that look like those original quasars but break too many rules to be classified the same way. Smaller, dimmer, cloaked in dense dust, and only visible in infrared light, these new items echo the past while rejecting any established category. The first of these new anomalies were spotted through the Subaru Telescope in Japan and were given the name Shelkus, low-cost exploration by Subaru Heise Luminosity Quasars. At first glance, they were just faint globs in the background of the cosmos, but their luminosity was far too high for their size and extreme bruising by distance alone. James Webb intervened, and what it saw was extraordinary. These weren't just dusty objects, they were suffocated by it entire galaxies wrapped in thick molecular clouds, hiding what lies within. But thanks to astronomers' use of Webb's infrared capabilities, they could finally pierce the curtain. The gases inside were moving at extreme velocity, far too fast for any stellar system. The only explanation. These objects were being pulled by the gravity of supermassive black holes. Yet, these black holes were different from any we've ever studied. Their host galaxies were insufficient, their light signatures didn't match any known quasar, and they were hidden their jets and accretion disks buried beneath cosmic fog. They weren't just faint quasars, they were something else, perhaps something more primitive, something that existed only in the chaotic youth of the universe and disappeared before our galaxies even formed. As the data piled up, patterns began to emerge. The Shulkus, though small, shared a surprising number of traits with the infamous little red dots discovered in the early deep field web images. Everywhere there were these red dots, but they were invisible to all instruments other than web. They glowed only in infrared, were coated in dust, ultraluminous, and compact. But here's the catch, they seem to exist only in a narrow cosmic window, from about 600 million to 1.5 billion years after the Big Bang. Before that, and after that, they vanish. What could exist for just 1 billion years and then disappear completely? The more scientists examined their spectra, the more evident it became these weren't galaxies, at least not in the traditional sense, nor were they simple quasars. 
These were active galactic nuclei, the cores of a brand new class black holes in systems that grew to quickly too small and surrounded by other extreme environments. Now, some researchers think that these red dots may be the embryonic form of modern quasars or even a failed evolutionary path of black hole formation. But there's another, more unsettling possibility, that they are the remnants of a different physics, a time when the universe itself operated under different rules, and the remnants of that age still flicker across the sky in Webb's infrared gaze. The most compelling part of this entire mystery is what we don't see. Many of these red dot candidates, despite showing all the traits of black hole-powered objects, do not release X-rays. This was once a major argument against the black hole theory because active galactic nuclei ought to be inundated with high-energy radiation. But now, scientists believe the answer is more terrifying. The dust is so thick, dense enough to eat the X-rays, capturing emissions with the highest energy inside and only letting through the faint red whispers that Webb can detect. If true, it means that we've missed entire populations of active black holes in the early universe, hidden not by distance but woven into the fabric of their cosmic environment. This entails a much higher number of supermassive black holes than previously estimated. And yet, we're still left with deeper questions. Why did they grow so fast? Why did they disappear? What else is there out there, still hidden in wavelengths we haven't unlocked yet? Because if the red dots and shell cues are connected, we might have just discovered a completely new galactic evolution life cycle. But if they're not, we may have just found an entirely new type of object in the universe, one that defies everything we thought we knew about matter, light, and time. As researchers analyzed the faint light emitted by these strange new objects, they noticed something even more unsettling, chemical fingerprints that didn't match anything we've ever seen. In past discoveries, spectral lines were often linked to common elements like carbon, hydrogen, helium, oxygen, and more. But in the case of these impossible objects, many of the lines were too wide, too skewed, or simply inaccessible. This wasn't just a case of redshift due to cosmic growth. These spectra seemed to display unidentified molecules or atomic states, possibly even exotic matter under extreme conditions never replicated on Earth. Some lines hinted at ionization levels that would require energies beyond what stars can produce. Others displayed erratic behavior, changing between visible and silence, suggesting a dynamic, unstable chemistry. The implication is chilling. Either these items are made of materials that science has never discovered, or they're subject to physical laws that operate differently under the immense pressure and the number of these small zones. It's as if the universe, in its youth, forged things that are currently unimaginable not just in structure but in substance itself. Another anomaly soon emerged, subtle but undeniable. Some of these objects appear to exhibit periodic fluctuations in brightness, not caused by stellar activity or rotation of dust, but by something deeper, gravitational rhythm. These fluctuations are so regular and so precise to the point where some physicists are studying them as pulses from space, potentially linked to orbital motion around a dense central mass. One theory posits that we may be witnessing matter precisely falling into a black hole at intervals, generating reverberations in gravity and light. Others suggest these pulses might be echoes resonances from earlier periods of global evolution still bursting into spacetime, amplified by the dense environments of these structures with red dots. The terrifying possibility is that some of these anomalies are not just emitting light. They're recording events that happened in a very different era of the universe events and patterns that we have never seen modeled. This behavior doesn't just conflate our models, causing instability in them. Because if gravity itself can synchronize with unidentified forces, this indicates that we are lacking an entire section in our comprehension of cosmic mechanics. What sets this discovery apart, even more staggering, is that these impossible objects might not be rare. They might be everywhere, simply hiding from view. 
Now, scientists believe that the shell cues, red dots, and similar dusty AGNS could number in the millions, possibly even billions, dispersed throughout the cosmos, just out of reach of our visible light instruments. Webb has revealed that these objects are not randomly distributed. They form clusters, filaments, and structures eerily similar to the cosmic web we see in galaxy formation simulations. Yet unlike normal galaxies, these objects are more compact, more volatile, and more luminous in the infrared spectrum. This has led some to theorize that these anomalies are actually the first generation of organized cosmic structures, the scaffolding upon which galaxies were later built. But if that's true, why do we not see their offspring today? Did they evolve into something else, merge with early galaxies, or simply burn out in a blaze of physics-defying glory? The idea that so much of the early universe was invisible until now has been deeply unsettling and profoundly humbling. We weren't looking in the wrong place, we were using the incorrect eyes. Perhaps the most disturbing thought to emerge from these discoveries is that the laws of physics themselves may not have been constant throughout time, some theorists are beginning to entertain a radical idea the constants of nature may not be constant. What if gravity, electromagnetic interaction, or even quantum behavior exhibited distinct behavior in the early universe? The red dots and shell cues could be remnants of that foreign epoch of time when the equations that govern our world didn't yet apply. Some physicists even speculate that these objects may represent phase transitions in the fabric of the cosmos, like cosmic fossils from a period when spacetime itself was still forming new crystals into stability. James Webb would then have found more than just impossible objects. It's found proof that the universe itself evolved not just in structure, but in laws. These objects would then be relics from before the universe settled down, when chaos ruled and matter danced to no longer written rules. And the terrifying truth, we may never fully understand them because they come from a version of the world that no longer exists. In a universe where order rules, equilibrium, and equations are predictable, the James Webb Space Telescope has uncovered a truth that shatters our sense of cosmic security. That's not all that's out there follows the rules. These objects that can't exist small, red, and silent anomalies that shone through veils in a dim light of ancient dust are more than just distant enigmas. They are reminders reminders that the universe was once wilder, stranger, and more violent than we could have imagined. That its initial chapters were written not in ink but in fire and gravity, in chaos and collapse. We once believed that galaxies' slow formation of black holes built themselves over billions of years and that physics was a universal constant. But now, we're staring at the wreckage of those assumptions, objects too powerful, too quick, and too dense for the timeline we've constructed. And the most terrifying part, we still don't know what they are. Are they the missing link between star and quasar, echoes of forgotten physics, or something so alien to our understanding that we haven't even developed the language to describe them yet? What James Webb has shown us is not just the depth of space, but the depth of our ignorance. And in that silence among the incomprehensible red dots and those dusty ghosts of a universe gone by, we hear the cosmos whisper a simple truth, you don't know me yet. 